took a step back to think about what it would take to get smartphones to more people. There are a few things that are clear. Devices would need to be more affordable, with entry-level prices dropping significantly. This means hardware that uses less power pack processors and far less memory than on premium devices. But the hardware is only half the equation. The software also has to be tuned for users' needs around limited data connectivity and multilingual use. We learned a lot from our past efforts here with Project Svelte and KitKat and the original Android One program. But we felt like the time was right to take our investment to the next level. So today, I'm excited to give you a sneak peek into a new experience we're building for entry-level Android devices. Internally, we call it Android Go. Android Go focuses on three things. First, optimizing the latest release of Android to run smoothly on entry-level devices, starting with Android O. Second, a rebuilt set of Google apps that use less memory, storage space, and mobile data. And third, a version of the Play Store that contains the whole app catalog, but highlights the apps designed by all of you for the next billion users. And all three of these things will ship together as a single experience, starting on Android O devices with one gigabyte or less of memory. Let's take a look at some of the things we're working on for Android Go. First, let's talk about the operating system. For manufacturers to make more affordable entry-level devices, the prices of their components have to come down. Let's take one example. Memory is an expensive component. So we're making a number of optimizations to the system UI and the kernel to allow an Android O device built with the Go configuration to run smoothly with as little as 512 megabytes to one gigabyte of memory. Now, on-device performance is critical, but data costs and intermittent connectivity are also big challenges for users. One person put it best to me when she said, mobile data feels like currency, and she wanted more control over the way she spent it. So on these devices, we're putting data management front and center in quick settings. And we've created an API that carriers can integrate with, so you can see exactly how much prepaid data you have left, and even top up right there on the device. But beyond the OS, the Google apps are also getting smarter about data. For example, on these devices, the Chrome Data Saver feature will be turned on by default. Data Saver transcodes content on the server and simplifies pages when you're on a slow connection. And now we're making the savings more visible here in the UI. In aggregate, this feature is saving users over 750 terabytes of data every day. I'm really excited that the YouTube team has designed a new app called YouTube Go for their users with limited data connectivity. Feedback from the, on the new YouTube app has been phenomenal. And we're taking many of the lessons we've learned here and applying them to several of our Google apps. Let me show you some of the things I love about YouTube Go. First, there's a new preview experience, so you can get a sneak peek inside a video before you decide to spend your data to watch it. And when you're sure this is the video for you, you can select the streaming quality you want and see exactly how much mobile data that's gonna cost you. But my favorite feature of YouTube Go is the ability to save videos while you're connected so you can watch them later when you might not have access to data. And if you wanna share any of those videos with a friend, you can use the built-in peer-to-peer sharing feature to connect two of your devices together directly and share the files across without using any of your mobile data at all. But beyond data management, the Google apps will also make it easier to seamlessly go between multiple languages, which is a really common use case for people coming online today. For example, Gboard now supports over 191 languages, including the recent addition of 22 Indian languages. And there's even a transliteration feature, which allows you to spell words phonetically on a QWERTY keyboard to type in your native language script. A Gboard is super cool, so I want to show it to you. I grew up in the US, so for any of my family that's watching, don't get too excited by the demo. I haven't learned Hindi yet, and I'm sorry, Mom. OK. So let's say I want to send a quick note to my aunt in India. I can open up Allo, and using Gboard, I can type how it sounds phonetically, which means, how are you, in Hindi. 
and transliteration automatically gives me Hindi script. That's pretty cool. Now let's say I want to ask her how my IO speech is going, but I don't know how to say that in Hindi at all. I can use the built-in Google Translate feature to say, how is this going? And seamlessly, I get Hindi script, all built right into the keyboard. <laughs> My family is apparently a tough audience. All right. <laughs> While the Google apps are getting goified, what has always propelled Android forward is the apps from all of you. And no surprise, many of our developer partners have optimized their apps already. So to better connect users with these experiences, we'll be highlighting them in the Play Store. One example is right here on Play's homepage. To be eligible for these new sections, we published a set of best practices called Building for Billions, which includes recommendations we've seen make a big difference in the consumer experience. Things such as designing a useful offline state, reducing your APK size to less than 10 megabytes, and using GCM or Job Scheduler for better battery and memory performance. And also in Building for Billions, you'll find best practices for optimizing your web experience. We've seen developers build amazing things with new technology, such as progressive web apps. We hope you can come to our developer keynote later today to learn a whole lot more. Okay, that was a quick walkthrough of some of the things coming in Android Go.